Hi, and welcome to this masterclass on how to make cookies in your Anchor Shroom Assistant. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you two different methods for mixing up the chocolate chip cookie recipe found in the Anchor Shroom recipe book. The first method is going to be using the beater bowl with the single wire cookie beaters. And the second method is going to be using the seven liter stainless steel bowl with the dough roller and the dough scraper, also known as the dough knife. One thing to keep in mind when choosing which bowl you're going to use, the plastic beater bowl can handle a half of this recipe or one full recipe. If you're wanting to do a double or even a triple of this recipe, we recommend using the seven liter stainless steel bowl with the dough roller and the dough scraper. We're gonna start today our plastic beater bowl and our single wire cookie beaters. So let's get started. We're gonna start by positioning the beater bowl post onto the mixer base. We're going to slide the bowl over top this post. You're going to make sure that the handle is facing you and the knobs while the pour spout is facing back towards the arm. Make sure it's seated all the way down onto the mixer base. Now we're going to assemble our single wire cookie beaters. You're gonna start with the beater housing, and then you're gonna position the black gear into the beater housing. Line up the teeth on the beaters as well as the gear and snap into place. And now you can position your beaters directly onto the post in the beater bowl. One thing to remember when making cookies in your beater bowl is that you always want to start with completely soft room temperature butter. A great tip that a cookie baker once shared with me is that before you get your ingredients ready to make cookies, if you'll go ahead and cut your butter into chunks, heat a mug of water in your microwave all by itself for two to three minutes, then move the steaming cup of hot water over in your microwave, set your bowl of butter in there, and while you we measure out the rest of your ingredients, your butter will be at the perfect texture for making cookies. Now, if you have a recipe that calls for making cookies with slightly chilled or cold butter, you will want to let your butter come to complete, completely room temperature soft butter. Then you'll be able to chill your cookie dough before shaping it or rolling it out or forming it into cookies. But you'll always want to use completely soft room temperature butter in your Anka Shroom. So let's get started by adding our butter first. We're gonna start with our chunks of butter and we're gonna place our single wire cookie beaters into the bowl. Now starting on the lowest speed, we're gonna turn our Anka Shroom on, slowly increasing our speed to about a two o'clock position. We're gonna slowly add in our sugar. And now we can add our brown sugar. And now we can turn our speed up to about a six o'clock on the speed control knob. You may have to turn the anchor shroom off to quickly scrape down the sides. and around the center post. Make sure to push your beaters all the way down onto the beater bowl and begin creaming again. 
Now we're going to slowly add in our eggs, one at a time. And now we're going to add our vanilla. We're gonna scrape down our sides one last time. And now we can continue our mixing. Now that our mixture is smooth and fluffy, I'm going to add in our leavening agents, our salt, our baking powder, and our baking soda. I like to add these ingredients in at my cookie dough when it's at its wettest to make sure that they get good and dissolved. This recipe calls for unsweetened dried coconut, which I'm gonna go ahead and add here. If you wanted to replace this with oatmeal, you certainly could, and I would add that at this point. Now, we have all of our ingredients added with the exception of our flour and our chocolate chips. It's important that at this point, you make sure that your anchor shroom is running at the slowest speed, and we're gonna start adding our flour a small scoop at a time. You do not want to run your anchor shroom on a higher speed once you start adding your dry ingredients because you're going to mix just until the flour is incorporated and then you're going to turn the mixer off. If you were to continue running the mixer at a high speed, as the cookie dough comes together, it's going to try and form a ball and this will be too heavy for the single wire beaters. And you run the risk of putting torque on the plastic bowl, causing it to twist, which can cause it to crack on the bottom. We're gonna scrape down the sides one last time. You can easily do this with the beaters in place, with the machine off. Now that our flour is incorporated, I'm gonna add in our chocolate chips. And we're going to let this mix just until combined and turn it off. Now we're going to remove our cookie beaters. Here's our cookie dough all ready to be scooped and baked. And now we're gonna switch over and make cookie dough in a stainless steel bowl with the dough roller and dough scraper. Now we're gonna mix up the exact same recipe using the main stainless steel bowl with the dough roller and the dough scraper. One thing to remember when creaming butter and sugar, whether it be for cookies, frosting, or even a pound cake recipe, the trick when using the stainless steel bowl with a roller and scraper is speed and patience. So let's get started. We're gonna start by positioning our dough scraper into the smaller of the two holes. Then we're gonna lift up on the pin, swing the arm to the center of the bowl, position our roller beneath the pin, and then push the pin down into the roller, allowing the roller to come back to the side of the bowl. Again, we're gonna start with completely softened room temperature butter. And now positioning the arm and the roller just slightly off the side, snugging down the tension knob, and we're gonna start on the slowest speed and slowly increase our speed. Somewhere to be between six and eight o'clock speed.
the butter will initially collect around the roller, which is fine. But because it's softer and at room temperature, the speed of the roller is going to sling the softened butter off of it. Allow your butter to cream for 30 seconds to a minute before starting to add your sugar. You can even move your scraper away from the side of the bowl to help encourage the butter to keep moving. And now we're gonna slowly add in some of our sugar. Here's where your patience is going to come into play. We're gonna scrape off the butter that's collected onto the dough knife. We're gonna to check to see if any butter has collected around the roller. It hasn't. So now we can turn our machine back on. Now we can add the rest of our sugar. And now we're going to add our brown sugar. And now that our butter and sugar is a soft paste, we can go ahead and add our eggs one at a time. And now we can add our vanilla. And our baking soda, salt, and baking powder. Make sure to pick up any ingredients that may be in the center of the bowl. And now we're going to turn the machine down to the lowest speed. And we're gonna start adding our dry ingredients. We're gonna start with our coconut. Again, if you wanted to substitute oatmeal for the coconut, you certainly could and you would add it at this point. And now we're just going to start adding our flour. Again, on the slowest speed. You don't ever wanna over mix your cookie dough because you don't want to develop the gluten or the protein that's naturally found in flour. Pick up any flour that's in the center. You can increase the speed just slightly. And depending on the volume of your cookie dough, whether you're doing a single recipe, a double recipe, or even a triple recipe, you'll position your arm and your roller further away from the side of the bowl for a larger batch, closer to the side of the bowl for a smaller batch. And now we're going to add our chocolate chips. Now that our dough is done mixing, they're ready to scoop and bake. Also, this recipe is great coming from the freezer. So you can scoop the cookie dough 
onto your baking sheet and put in the freezer until the cookie dough balls have frozen solid. Then remove them into a zip top bag or a food storage container and store in your freezer until you're ready to bake. You can go straight from the freezer into the oven and bake for just one additional minute. Now I'm gonna set both machines back up and we're gonna go, go back over some of the tips and tricks to using both the beater bowl and the stainless steel bowl with the dough roller and scraper. Now that our cookies are done baking, let's go over some do's and don'ts and tips and tricks for using your beater bowl with the single wire cookie beaters or the seven liter stainless steel bowl with the dough roller and dough scraper. Remember in your beater bowl, for anything heavier than egg whites or whipping cream or a light icing, you're going to use the single wire cookie beaters. Remember to always use completely soft room temperature butter. You can cream your butter and sugar on a high speed, but remember when you start adding your dry ingredients, you're gonna turn the machine down to the lowest speed Mix just until combined and then turn the mixer off. Over mixing cookie dough will create a more bread-like cookie, which you're not going for. And it can also put unwanted torque onto the mixing bowl, causing it to crack and break at the bottom. When it comes to the size of your cookie dough recipe, use our chocolate chip cookie recipe in the Ankish Room recipe book as a reference point. You can do as little as a half of a recipe in the beater bowl, and you can do a single batch in the beater bowl. Anything larger than that, you'll want to use the stainless steel bowl with the dough roller and dough scraper. For short crust or pastry dough that calls for cold butter, we recommend grating your frozen butter into small butter shavings which you can then add to your dry ingredients, mixing on the lowest speed just until combined. Then you're going to remove your pastry crust or pie dough from the beater bowl and finish forming or kneading by hand on your board. When using the seven liter stainless steel bowl with the dough roller and dough scraper for anything from cookie dough to frosting or pound cake that requires creaming butter and sugar, Remember that speed and patience are your friends. Use completely soft room temperature butter. Position the roller just slightly off the side of the bowl. Cream your butter by itself for one to two minutes on a high speed. Then gradually add your sugar and continue creaming until you have a smooth paste. This may require you to turn the machine off one or two times to scrape any butter and sugar that's collected around the roller and on the dough knife. You can do anywhere from a single recipe to a triple recipe of cookie dough in your stainless steel bowl with the roller and the scraper. Depending on the size of your cookie dough recipe, you will adjust the position of the arm and the roller once you start adding your dry ingredients. For a larger batch, you'll move the arm and the roller further away from the side of the bowl. And for a smaller batch, it can remain closer to the side of the bowl. When trying to decide which bowl or mixing tool to use for your particular recipe, remember that from 1940 until the Ankish Room Assistant entered the United States in the early 90s, the only thing that Swedish families had to make breads cakes, cookies, frosting, and everything they needed for their home, they used the roller and scraper. So when in doubt, the stainless steel bowl with the dough roller and the dough scraper is a great place to start when trying out new recipes. In this video, we've shown you how easy it is to mix up a batch of cookie dough in either the beater bowl with the single wire beaters or the seven liter stainless steel bowl with the dough roller and dough scraper. We hope that you see just how versatile the Ankish Room Assistant is from mixing up small batches to large batches, cookie dough to bread dough, and everything in between. Please check out all of our other masterclass videos and reach out to us at ankishroom.com with any additional questions and happy baking.